VXLAN. Awesome stuff. So in this series, which I've been working on for quite some time now, kind of like what I did with SD-WAN, I went through and I learned a bunch of stuff. And we're going to be going through a bunch of different topics when it comes to SD-WAN. SD -WAN. Did it again. VXLAN and how it all comes together. Did I start off with VXLAN? I think I started with VXLAN. Anyway, we're going to be studying VXLAN in this series, and it's going to be really cool. So I have a lot of different topics to discuss with you guys as we're going forward. So this is going to be basically me taking the configuration guide for VXLAN, as well as a book that was written by a gentleman. His first name is Tony. I don't exactly know where he's from, but I know he's not American. Um... He wrote a book, and I will link his book in the description of this video and every other video so that you have reference to it. I believe it's available on Amazon and LeanPub, but I'll double check. Um, but he wrote the book, and it is called, one second here, while I pull up the name of the book, the name of the book is Virtual Extensible Land, the pra a Practical Guide to VX Land Solution. So it is a multi-step book. It covers a lot of the VXLAN components and things like that. I bought the book. Uh, it's been a good read and something that I have used for quite some time. It actually helped me with a couple of deployments of VXLAN and some different scenarios that I had to work through. I've been through a lot of the configuration of it. And over a lot of the config stuff that I've covered, I've come to realize how VXLAN works and stuff like that. And I, when I originally was planning on this series, I was going to have multiple topologies, and I was just going to shift between them and like kind of give you guys some notice as to when they were going to transition from one topology to the next. And then I realized that that was going to be subpar for you guys as learners because you'd have to power down the existing topology and then open up a new one, power them all back up, and that that's time consuming, right? So rather than that, I went through all the different things that we're going to talk about, and I was able to get a lot of things set up to where, as I was getting them set up, I was able to come up with a singular, just one topology that we're going to be walking through through our entire VXLAN series. I have, no many, I have no idea how many videos it's actually going to be. I'm guessing up to around 20 because there's really not that many features to, to cover. A lot of it's going to be the, the main components of how VXLAN works. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the topology. This is what you guys are going to get to work with. So it is a rather involved topology. It's going to take us some time to walk through how everything works and all that type of stuff. And the flow is going to be kind of in the effect of understand the problem statement. Why would an, an organization need or an environment need a VXLAN solution to do the work that it needs to do? Then we're going to, once we have that baseline understanding, we're going to talk about how you can deploy VXLAN and the different ways that you can do it. We'll deploy, we'll go through and the, there will be some initial configurations that we're going to go through, but everything that we're going to be diving into is going to be, there's going to be a video to help set up every aspect of what we're doing. So essentially, when we go through and we configure any one particular area, there won't be an initial config set up for it. There will be a final config that you can, you know, piece together and you can associate as you're doing. So like, for example, IP addressing and stuff like that won't be provided in an initial config. Everything will be configured as we go. So there won't be anything done ahead of time that you'll need. So configuring interfaces, I get quite a few requests for people to, uh, from viewers to put together initial configurations because they don't want to be bothered with IP addressing. Well, sorry to hear that. Um, the nature of the business, get used to IP addressing. I absolutely have no... Uh, I don't have a soft spot for anybody when it comes to being lazy when it comes to lab building because guess what? I build all of my own labs and I may I have to go through and recreate them two, three, four, five times as I'm going through and learning how a particular solution works. So I figure out exactly what the best topology is for a holistic solution because I like to have one topology when I'm done. 
so I can walk through as many scenarios as I can in a, in a knock it out kind of fashion. So there will be a configuration available per video. So I'll provide you the final configs, but there won't be any initial configuration. I will literally get everything up and running from scratch in each video. Some videos will be longer than others. Some will be relatively short, 10, 15 minutes. Some videos might be up to an hour long, depending on what it is that we're trying to configure and all that type of stuff. One thing that I was planning on doing was figuring out exactly which commands were required in order to get a particular solution to work. And I have basically taken that logic and thrown it out the window because the reality of it is I'm not going to waste my time digging down to which command, what minimum configurations are needed. If I'm talking about a particular topic, I'm going to throw every command in to the config that's needed in order to make that work so that I'm not sitting there trying to troubleshoot individual features or capabilities. So we are going to literally start from ground zero with no VXLAN deployed, then we're going to work our way to a router design. And then once we have the router design, and actually over here, I will put down a list of the topics that we're going to cover. So we are going to go through and deploy VLANs and trunks so we can see the problem statement, how traditional layer two catalyst based networks and even nexus based switches will forward traffic with VLANs and trunking and see why that is not going to scale well in a, in a next generation network. So for those of you that are studying for like a CCNA or you're fixated on the fact of VLANs and trunking, that aspect kind of goes out the window. It's no longer an applicable solution in a data center. You won't see land-based networking in a data center. It just doesn't scale well. Where you can deploy VXLAN and there's other solutions that don't necessarily need VXLAN that are out there. For example, NSXT, which is VMware's networking solution, doesn't use VXLAN in NSXT, it is Geneve. So for example, if you're playing with NSX or vSphere, you are using VXLAN for your inter-host communication. But in NSXT, it's using Geneve. If you're using Cisco's ACI solution, they're the ACI enabled lease switches and then you're in spines and then you have the, the APIC controlling the environment. That's using VXLAN as well. So there's a couple different scenarios that do come into play with how this all comes together. These are some of the details that you're gonna need to understand as we're going forward. So we're gonna be taking a look at how all this stuff plays out. But we're going to start out VLANs and trunking. We're going to uh, flood some some IP addresses and some or some MAC addresses into the network for reachability and see exactly how that plays out. We're also going to go through and uh, convert that over. I will have a video that's you know the IP addressing and setting up OSPF in the core. Then we're going to talk about if there is no multicast in the backbone between the lease and the spines. We're going to go ahead and leverage ingress replication, which is basically unicast replication of multi of the VXLAN communication. We're then going to add in multicast. We'll deploy PIM everywhere in the network and get PIM operational, and then deploy flood and learn, or multicast-based learning for bum traffic, broadcast unknown unicast and multicast traffic inside of the, the backbone. Then we'll take a look at deploying BGP, or which in that case, when we're dealing with multicast, it's flood and learn using a multicast address. We'll also take a look at BGP eBPN. We'll deploy that in fully, and then we'll actually rip out the multicast deployment and do VXLAN eBPN with ingress replication. We will also, so you'll see type MAC type two and MAC type three routes in the routing table. You'll, or the, the, the layer two VPN eBPN table. Then we'll deploy a multicast. So you can see both BGP eBPN with multicast and how that'll come into play and you'll see just Mac uh, route type 2 which is basically Mac address advertisements then we will go ahead and deploy inter VNI routing and let me just make sure that I'm laying this out correctly so yeah I'm just making sure that we have that all squared away so before we get into inter VNI routing we'll add a second VLAN and a second VNI to do a little bit of scaling we'll talk about multi multi tenancy and how that comes into play then we're going to dive into inter VNI routing with the the concept of a shared VNI. We'll talk about symmetric inter integrated routing and bridging and things like that. Once we have that done, we'll flip over and we are going to fully deploy an MPLS Layer 3 VPN to basically simulate a private WAN connection between our VXLAN fabric and a bunch of other locations that might need to access anything inside of that. So we'll do external connectivity 
with a feature known as VRF Lite, or for those of you that have a service provider background and are familiar with inter AS option A, or back-to-back -back VRF, we'll be deploying something along those lines in our environment and getting all that squared away. Then I'm going to, uh, that'll be the external connections aspect where we'll be allow, allowing external access inbound from the outside. So it's going to be some cool stuff that we're going to dive into there. And then we are going to deploy a singular firewall. And the singular firewall is going to allow us to expand upon the existing environment. So if you need to allow your VXLAN attached devices that are part of that fabric, I keep bumping my, my, but my camera is wobbling. Um, we'll deploy firewalls to allow internet access into our VXLAN fabric if we need to do that as well. There will be doing VPC as well. And VPC is kind of a tricky little bird when you start playing with it in a VXLAN fabric, so which is also referred to as any cast of VTAP. We'll take a, take a look at how that comes into play and all that good stuff along with it. And then we're going to take a look at expanding that out. How do you get the internet or to a DMZ or access into the the environment in order for it to work the way we need it to? There's some cool stuff that we're going to get into with that. Then we're going to dive into the tenant routed multicast. We'll do tenant routed multicast. See exactly how you know if you wanted to run multicast over VXLAN, how that would come into play. I have tested out and everything up to this point I've tested out. It's the well, tenant route of multicast I haven't actually tested yet, but I will test that ahead, ahead of time and just remove whatever configs are there. I've done probably 90% of the work already. It's just a matter of going through and playing around with some of these specific features. One thing that I have played with, but I was never able to get the control, the data plane to work, is multi-site. And that was one question that I was, uh, one particular topic that I was asked about when I started talking about doing VXLAN a long time ago was, can you do multi-site? And I will go through the motions of trying to set multicast or multi-site up, but the last time I tried getting it to work, it only would work for control plane. So I would see MAC addresses show up on the lease switches in, in the different sites from the remote site. So you'd have VXLAN and VE peers set up and all that stuff, but data plane communication would not work. And I was never able to figure out why. There was other scenario, other things that came into play that restricted me from finishing up that testing. So I don't know if we're actually going to get the data plane to work, but I'm going to give it a concerted effort and try and see exactly how all that stuff plays out. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the topology. Now, for those of you that are still watching, if you want to check, if you are a member of the channel, you will be able to gain access to the topology and the configurations of every single lab. I will have them broken down based off of the the lab that they are. So you'll be able to pull up the configs. Once I'm done configuring something, I will create notepad docs and they will be sitting in the folder that you'll be able to access if you're a member. So if you want to get access to the topology, then that's something that I would recommend you go do. Now, a little bit about the hardware. So I get a lot of questions about how the hardware comes into play of this deployment. You're going to need a lot of resources. Right now, I'm sitting around 12 gigs of utilization, and that's running six VXLAN switches as well as uh, two iOS VL2 switches. So a total of eight I uh, QEMU devices, and I've got three virtual PCs that actually come with eBNG. So if you are looking to deploy this, you're going to need... A lot of re, uh, a lot of resources in order to make this actually happen. Now, in total, there are I've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I so actually flip back over here. I've got these six Nexus 9K switches working currently, plus two border gateway switches at the main data center, and then a third one over here at this smaller data center. But we're going to test multi-site. Multi-site will be done between these two locations right here, and we will attempt to get that to work. But my end game here is I'm not exactly sure how, uh, if I'll be able to run these additional five 9K switches. And the reason why I say that way is if I was to pull this up and go to status, we're learning, we're looking at about 20 quarter of our CPU, quarter of our memory. But if I come over here and I look at the, go ahead and log into this guy real quick. Go 
go ahead and log into that. You will see that I'm using about half of my capacity for memory. Now, mind you, there are a couple of other VMs running on here. I've got CUCM, which is chewing up a, a fair amount. But as you can see, EVE Pro is taking up the majority of it. So I don't know if I'll be able to scale up to the full capacity in order for that to do what I need it to do. But one thing that I will do is when I'm testing out the border gateway and doing multi-site, I will power down the 5K and 6K hosts or, or leaf switches that are providing my connectivity. I'll power down all of these guys so that we're just testing multi-site. And if I seem, if it, if it makes sense, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, when, when I'm testing it out, if it, if I can power down a lot of devices to free up resources and still get multi-site to work, that's what I'll do. I'm not going to, my goal is not to test out tenant rotted firewall or, uh, tenant based firewall or firewall service insertion or external connectivity over multi-site. That's not my, my goal. My goal is to set up multi-site so that PCs in the same VLAN can talk to each other over VXLAN like they would if they were, you know, Jiri tunneled or something along those lines. That's my goal. So with that being said, that is where I'm going with this whole deployment. So we're gonna go through it rather quickly. So I'm gonna try to get this done as soon as, as quickly as I can. We're gonna go through the details of the technologies to make sure that all of us understand what's going on and how they work. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is that it's gonna take um, it's going to take some time to go through. I'm going to be doing Wireshark captures and some debugs so you guys can see what's happening behind the scenes and stuff like that. We'll walk through some of the issues that I ran into and how you can avoid them. But as it says, as it sits right then and there, that's basically what we're going to go ahead and do. So I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me in this video. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see all of you guys in the next video. And I am super pumped about being able to do VXLAN. Until next time, guys, take her easy.